come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits? The Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> well, welcome. Pop that bottle. To Woo! the... Uh, oh, there it is. <laughs> we have many bottles open. So this is the 300th episode. It's like a straight-up hip-hop video in here. We're just pouring them out, left and right. <laughs> yep. This is the champagne room. Yes. You're in uh-huh. it. Yes, You're in we're it. in it right now. We've got cigars. We've got uh, champagne. champagne. Mm-hmm. We're hitting it up Pop because... Cakes. Fine desserts. <laughs> yep. This is the 300th episode of the Saturday Night Freak Woo! Show podcast. Woo! We did it. Yeah. <laughs> we did it. Where do we go from here? Yeah. Uh, 301. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, 301 yeah. next week. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've been, uh, this started out as uh, we we're just going to sit around and talk about uh, movies. And that's that still was, uh, that's, Yeah. Uh, 2012. It's six years, right? Wow. I mean, I know that, you know, not all of us were there then, but what were your first episodes? Do you remember your first episode? My then? first episode was True Romance. True Romance. Which was probably about, I think, six episodes into this incarnation of the freak show. Oh, first wow. episode, like, ever, or first episode as a full-time member? Let's do first ever. First episode ever. Ever? Monster Squad, Monster I think. Squad. Uh, yeah. Holly? Uh, mm-hmm. Full-time was Raw Hydrex. That's right. Were you Santa's sleigh? No, I brought no, Santa's sleigh. No, she brought Santa's sleigh. Yeah. My first was, uh, it was either the Giver or I the Time were, Machine. I thought you were before Giver. No, I think Giver came before Scream 2. See, we don't even know. We've been at this. There's so many yeah. episodes. It might have been the time machine. So long. There's oh, probably God, stuff that you guys remember. know that we've forgotten about. So now stay tuned for our clip show where you're going to hear all of our right. best moments. <laughs> the, next, the next hour and a half. <laughs> you're going to hear a lot of out of context quotes. It'll be fun. You're going to hear a lot of trademark Love ideas. <laughs> yeah, it's all. It's just going to be all the trademarks set on every show. Yeah. With intermittent screaming from you, Sean, mm-hmm. but yeah. all, all your all your moments yeah. of your heightened. Oh, screaming. please! Somebody put a clip show together of me yelling. <laughs> oh, God. That'd be I great. Love it. Well, I'm going to propose a toast. I don't know what the toast is, but here's to uh, 300, episodes. 300, episodes uh, 300 episodes and 300 and more. more. All right. Cheers to that. Uh-huh. Saturday night uh, All right. So yeah, anyway, check all our social media posts for our pictures of us smoking and drinking yep. and having a uh, wondrous time. <laughs> So, uh, we did actually watch a movie tonight. Mm. Uh, and first of all, I suppose we should introduce ourselves. Yeah. We yeah. are the Internet Radio Superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And uh, tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Holly. Holly, what did we watch tonight for the 300th episode? 300. We watched Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs. Mm. What year just come out? 1991. Okay. Okay. All right, so um, I have not I had not seen this movie before tonight. Right. That's right, you were neither have I. Yep, oh yep. my god! Yep. See, this is the amazing thing about the Saturday Night Freak Show: yep. bringing films to uh, new viewers and hopefully new listeners. That's right. Listeners. Yep, indeed. Um, so we'll tell you at the end of the episode whether or not you should watch this movie. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit of a discussion here, and then we'll answer some of your mail. Um, so first of all, Wes Craven. Hmm. Is uh, is he on the wall of because uh, we've done like cursed seven scream movies? Uh, yeah. Uh, we didn't done any of the nightmare. Oh, yeah, we, did we do? We not, no, we didn't. Elm Street three. You guys definitely did Music of the Heart, right? Uh, oh yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> you, you can't. Your Wes Craven filmography can't be. That's actually a good movie. I shouldn't be dogging on it. No, it is a good, it movie, is good movie. It's just not what you like, want from what? Wes Craven. West, yeah. 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 Is it Meryl Streep in that movie? Yes, yeah. yeah, she is. Of yeah. course. Wait, who else is in Gloria it? Uh, Gloria Stefan. That's who yeah. I was thinking of. Yes. <laughs> Where he went uh, and did a drama, which was off uh, off brand, I guess, for Wes Craven. But... No, he's definitely on the wall now. Oh, you guys yeah. Just scream- Speaking of the wall, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, Ving Rhames is now on the wall. No. Oh, yes. Oh. All right. <laughs> About time. The third Rames. magical appearance of Ving Rhames. On this podcast, this I place am, is going to start looking I'm like the Brown Derby. The what I were the other two? Uh, Con Air and um, oh, Jesus. Dawn of the Dead. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right, this wall's getting he, Con full, Air. Full of photos. Well, yeah. He gets on there because of Con Air. That's the <laughs> technical one. Right. You know, Con Air is one of those movies, though, like um, All the President's Men or something, where if you if you don't know 
you know, if you if you need a movie with an actor in it to play like a Six Degrees of Separation oh, huh. or for trivia, just guess it. That movie because so many people true. are in it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Glenn Gary Glenn Ross works well for that too. Yeah. You know, like there's a couple political dramas like that that if you just name yeah. them, you more than likely someone's in it. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, you're right. Con Air's like that though. Yeah, Con Air's like that. How many people have been put on the wall because of Con Air alone? You know, like <laughs> uh, so yeah. factors into a few people. Yeah. 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 All right. So this movie is. That's right. Well, yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, 1991. Yeah. The uh, the film was made if, for Universal Pictures, if I remember correctly. Okay, so Alice Cooper ties into this in a way. Do you know oh, this story? I do not know this, no. Okay, so Alice Cooper has uh, for a long time was managed by a guy named Shep Gordon. I think he still is. Okay. Shep Gordon Sh- runs... Is Shep Gordon the one they did the documentary yes, about? Yes, they okay. did. Mm-hmm. And he runs a live entertainment. And in the nineteen uh, late eighties to early nineties, they got into producing horror movies, and so they financed them. All of them released by Universal Pictures. And basically, it was the idea: where the budgets are going to be small, but we're going to approach John Carpenter and Wes Craven and give them, you know, like here's like a million and a half or something. Right, do whatever you, you want. can do, whatever you want. And uh, out of, so it's a four picture deal, basically two for Carpenter, two for Craven. Carpenter did They Live and, oh, sorry, Prince of Darkness and They Live. Okay. And cool. Craven did uh, Shocker and, or no, sorry, it was People Under Stairs and Shocker okay. for his two. Interesting. Yep. So that's where the, uh, the money came from and where the uh, impetus, I guess, for like, hey, you can do whatever you want. So when unbridled Wes Craven. Mm-hmm. Here, you can do whatever he wants within a budget level. Should yeah. should Wes Craven be bridled? Yeah. Well, this is a yeah, question. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think so. Why do you think so? Well, I mean, because what do we get when he's unbridled? We get, uh, well, we get this movie. We get uh, My Soul to Take. I yeah. have a feeling. What else? Not? New Nightmare, probably, Yeah, too. I've seen enough of My Soul to Take. Have you? Yeah. I, I think I got. I have. As I'm, I keep mentioning, I I'm saw working, the test screening. I'm working on a unified theory of I Wes know. Craven that uh, I think is going to demand a reappraisal of my soul. Probably. So but and I'm continue. all for getting back. Into oh, that. I can already see the think piece is like five years from now being like, is this actually a classic? You know, you know like about that year. What it means to Wes Craven to make those movies. Yeah. Like personally, yeah. what he's working through and all that stuff. I yeah, think that's the line you well, go through. Well, Wes Craven's a guy, he came from a uh, super religious. I'm not sure if it was Orthodox or something like this background. I mean, have you ever heard anything about, like, Wes Craven's upbringing? A little was, bit. Yeah, have a little you? bit, but, it's, but it was pretty strict, wasn't it? Yeah, but, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about it. This no. is what I'm saying. It seems like he basically says that he came up in a really strict religious background where they weren't allowed to watch movies. Right. So his first experience with watching movies was when he was uh, in college. I think he went to college... Oh. And then he saw, like, you know, Bergman movies and all this. So he was influenced by the uh, French New Wave and, you know, European cinema and these kind of heady think piece movies. Yeah. Um, and then he got the bug and wanted to get into it. And then he got into, like, you know, doing nudie uh, cuties yeah. or something mm-hmm. like that with Sean Cunningham. And eventually uh, he was like, they asked him if he could do a horror movie. And that was Last House on the Left because he'd seen Bergman's Virgin Spring. Mm-hmm. So that's his remake of that. But. I mean, specifically looking at like Shocker and uh, the uh, and My Soul to Take, both of them have this thing about um, fathers. fathers. The idea that like the father is a like real evil bastard, and the son who grows up is afraid that he is somehow contaminated by the uh, the even like, do I have some of this right. in me? So we need to know more about Wes Craven's father. Is what you're yeah. saying. Because I wonder, and then when you watch, because that's how I was, I haven't seen people under stairs in a while, and so watching it tonight, I was like sitting there going like, I mean, the, the well, I suppose we should I'll talk more about this as we get into it. Yeah. What is this movie about? Uh, it's about yeah. uh, people under a set of stairs, Colin. <laughs> 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 uh, obviously. <laughs> what else could it be about? Oh, 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 oh. That reminds me of something yeah. else. <laughs> All right. Okay, so there's another little memory blast. Yeah. I remember the trailer for this movie like it was yesterday. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. This happens every once in a while. Something gets stuck in your head. Yeah. So imagine the great Percy Rodriguez. Yes. Great voice. Right? I mean, this had to be at the end of his career. But yeah. in every yeah. neighborhood, there is one house yes. mm-hmm. that adults whisper about and children cross the street to Ooh. avoid. Ooh, it's a good trailer. Now, Wes Craven 
director of A Nightmare on Elm Street, takes you inside. Ooh, and that's that, great. And that's amazing. That's, that's fucking and wonderful. that's actually the tagline on the poster. Is it? It is. Oh, yeah. If yeah. only the movie lived up to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. that's... I want to see that movie. Because That's this, the movie I want to see. Because, <laughs> like, the, okay, there's two that's directions so you can go with that, right? It becomes, like, a... Like, it either becomes dog tooth, or it becomes... Like, uh, are you afraid of the dark story? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you yeah. have to yeah. stick really hard to one direction with it, and I don't know if this movie made a choice either way on that. Yeah, hmm. I agree with that. So what's the well? What's the setup? That's good recall, so. Colin. I know, but I know that it's like weird. That like some shit you can't remember, and yeah. other stuff stays with you for life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, <laughs> what's it about? You're saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, indeed. <laughs> so it centers on uh, a young boy. Known as Fool, uh, who Poindexter. Is, Poindexter, yes. Who is from uh, the ghetto, essentially, and he is his family is being evicted from their apartment, and he, his sister's friend Bing Rames, is yeah, <laughs> um, has an idea that they're going to rob the landlords of this complex that they live in um, because they're known to have quite a treasure. Yes. In their in their house. Mm-hmm. That's the setup we get for the people under the stairs. Um, well, it, I guess it. Uh, I was going to say, like, I know Wes Craven at the time he was quoted as saying, like, you know, it's like who, you know, who comes to see horror films? He says yeah. it's usually like disaffected, um, you know, audiences, people right. who think that they're different, like, gravitate toward uh, horror movies. And so, I mean, I think maybe it was the first of his films to feature, like, a predominantly African-American, well, I was going to say African-American cast, but that's yeah. maybe not entirely true. Yeah. I but mean, at least central characters. At least four central one, characters, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have a question about the, the family in this, at the center of this movie, because I was very confused with the way they were speaking about each other, who was related to who. Yeah. Because, okay, true. so the mom was the one sick in the bed, sick right? In bed. Sick in the bed. Okay. And then the other girl was his sister? His sister. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Then why did she say, sister, then why did she say, like, you're the man of the house, you gotta take care of the kids? His sister little kids. kids. Well, we never saw them. Yeah, we so did. That, at the we very, did at the very okay. beginning. Fool is tucking one of them. So in the that bed. little kid okay. has to take care of the other little kids, yeah. even though yeah. they have those kids have a mom. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That, that made no well, sense. Well, because to me. mom is out apparently, and it didn't really like. Ving Rings had a line of dialogue that said she was out turning tricks. I'm like, is yeah. she a yeah. prostitute? Yeah. yeah. So that's what they're basically the idea being that in this uh, you know situation that they live in. They are struggling to get by and make ends meet, right. and this forces them to do something that uh, is outside of the law, right? Yeah. I mean, right. Bing Rames is comfortable with this. He's uh, like runs a crew with this other guy. What was his name? Shorty? Spencer? Spencer? <laughs> or Shorty. Either yeah. one. <laughs> Either one works. Yeah. And so they say, well, we're going to get back at the landlords. Because the landlord, when we first heard this, the landlord's kicking them out like in three days. Or no, they missed a... They were three days late on a payment, which yeah. triples their payment that they have to make. And if they can't make that, they're out. They're also yeah. the they're last family. They're out by, family. like, tomorrow at yeah. midnight. Yeah. Yeah. They're also the last family in this building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, would, I mean, in some in some ways, being the last family in an apartment building sounds awesome. Because, sure. But, but not in that apartment But why building. are you the only one left is the question you should be asking. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's wrong with this building that we're the only one left? Like, that should be a red mm-hmm. flag to you if you're the only one left yeah. in the building. Well, I mean, also, when the kid walked into the building, there's just a bunch of uh, strung out people all mm-hmm. up the stairs. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's a bad sign, too. People on the stairs, under the stairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Around the stairs. This movie's focused on stairs, Sean. There's <laughs> lots of stairs. <laughs> it's in the title. Lots of stairs. You have to expect it going in. Right, gonna be for a while there, there was just it was this was like the people in the walls. Yeah, yeah. that's what it really was for <laughs> half of the movie. Yeah, well, yeah maybe yeah, like yeah. four two thirds of the movie. Yeah. I'm just like, uh, what do we get to the? Oh yeah, and then they say the title. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yes. mm-hmm. yeah, well, okay, so they end up uh, the 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 first. I don't know. It's a good at least half of the movie or more is the setup for Ving Rhames is going to enlist the little kid fool. To help out in robbing the landlord's house. Now, yeah. the landlords, they live He's gonna in... He's going to do recon, yeah. basically. And they live in a, uh old funeral home. Right. And the the people in the house are played by uh, Everett McGill and Wendy Ro- Robbie? Roby? Right. From, oh! From Twin Peaks. I just realized what I know Everett McGill from. Silver Bullet. 
Well, there's that. Mm-hmm. Under Siege 2 okay. is what I, is what <laughs> oh, I, yeah, yeah, is Under what I remember two. him from. Wow. Under Siege 2, Dark Territory. All right. All right. On That's the train. I mean. On the Hells train. Because yeah. right, he yeah. gets in a knife fight with Steven Skull. It's like, fuck, you ruined my coat. And they, they fight each other. Yeah. And, uh, I see him in a, uh, and like a suit and from. tie, and I can't remember what yeah. that yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he has Very to be... serious individual. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, but they were also, I think, at this the time that this movie was produced, they were on Twin they Peaks were on playing. Twin Peaks. Yeah, a couple on yeah. Twin Peaks. Whose names I can't remember, even though they were I was a couple a fan of that on... show. Oh yeah, both of them. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. was that was why they were they were hired for this movie. Interesting. You love them in Twin Peaks. Uh huh. It's kind of like that thing with Near Dark. We're just going to take the people who work well together and mm-hmm. transform them, all them into another Are situation. You? Why not? Cool. So the first uh, portion of this movie then is about like you know um, we know that there's something off about this house. They bring you inside it pretty early on. Like we get to see like a little bit of like the interior of the house, the family dynamic. There's the mother and the father and the daughter. Yeah, and Alice. they're extremely strict with her. Uh, and I think there's like two or three scenes before we actually get into the house. But I mean, this is kind of like Craven's building the you know. What is going on in here? What are yeah. these people all about? Well, you know, it's like they're going to get uh, robbed, but they've got, um, you know, like fence screening, padlocks, oh, all the windows. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Padlocks on the outside of the window. Yeah, yeah the house is a fortress. Yeah. No one can, has, it can get in there. It is a fucking contraption. The house is like an organism of itself with all the fucking trap doors. And- mm-hmm. I love it. It is. I want to explore really? that house. Really? Yeah. Do you love it? I do. Oh, I just want to, because, like, it reminds me of, like, um, I, when I was a kid, I had a friend who had a house that it wasn't as... Did it have a dumbwaiter? Well, it didn't have that. No, it wasn't expan- as expansive as this house, but it had places in it, because I don't. it wasn't totally finished, where you can move within the walls to go to different rooms. Yeah. And it was, like, only, like, two other rooms, and there were doors that opened and everything. But you could go, like, slide through the walls and get to the other side. But it's not like a, that's not like a, like a trap no, 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 or anything like that. Like but that. It, it's like, it's the kid thing of just, like, oh, I can explore, like, the crevices yeah. of a house and secret areas and stuff yeah. like that, which always seems like a fun thing to Every do. Every kid yeah. wants to do Every that. kid wants oh, yeah. secret yeah. areas in a house. Yeah. Yeah. The, um... Uh, there, this house comes equipped with all sorts of, I mean, like a super security lockdown. You know, all the doors have shutters on them. Windows have shutters on them. The uh, stairway to the basement turns into a slide if, you know, you hit a One button. There's inter- intercoms and all this other stuff, hidden passageways. Mm-hmm. In between the walls, uh, I swear to God, are like full hallways. Full hallways. You know, uh, a dog well, and, and children to get This through. house is so big and every single... It's well, like there's how many two floors houses. are to this house? Like, it, it, I could not make heads or tails of like where yeah, this I house started and where it ended. Two there's floors, a, two floors, a cellar, and an attic. Yeah. yeah, but in between those floors, there's like full-on corridors hidden behind every wall that you can just run yes. around the whole house. It feels like it's yeah. cut in half, and there's the normal house, and then if you go through enough walls, there's the fucked up side of the house. It's like there's two houses in this. Is it like a house hiding within a house? Right. Yeah. There's rooms that you see for, like, a scene that you don't even yeah. see again. There was a room, like, full of candles. Did you see that at one yeah. point? Yeah, I answer? saw that. I, that was, I had questions I'm like, this place is going to burn down. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I guess the idea is, like, they're getting in there because they've heard that there's gold in the house. Or gold yep. coins, right? There's gold in their hills. And so then they're going to go in and steal the gold. And those hills have eyes. And okay. so, but basically what this does is it sets up, you know, like we get to understand who Fool is and what his family dynamic is and what he wants, right? Yeah, right. Is to basically not be evicted or, you know, to not be completely living in poverty. Right. And also to save his mom. And to save his mom. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's a whole uh, bunch of stuff on there. And then it, then it becomes the like planning for the heist kind of, right? Yeah. And then you get like this extended sequence of... Getting into the house, and then once you're in there, discovering you're in a problem, and you got to get back out again. Right. right. Uh, this is played through like a pretty, like relentless pace. It is. Yeah. Because there's also a dog. I think relentless involved. is a good word. Yeah. For like, I was like, when are the people under the stairs going to come into this movie? Because right now it is redundant with put the dog in the walls and let it chase them. Yeah, that, how many times did that happen? Yeah. It was. yeah, but it just, like, kept going, which was, yeah. I guess, the thing that, like, I just, this time around, really watching it, was surprised at how much, uh, you know, how much of a forward momentum that part of the movie had. I don't See, I don't feel like it's forward momentum because it's the same thing that keeps happening over and over again. 
So I don't feel like the story's progressing at all. Yeah, I feel it like it's feels the like same it stalls thing. out there yeah. for a minute. The, they just keep putting around the around dog around. in the wall every five so, minutes yes. to chase the dude. Like I they just go they just go to a different part of the house and put the dog in there. Yeah. That happens for like what, twenty minutes? Because right. a lot of it is the little kid can get away from the uh the grown ups by crawling through these tiny little right. uh Corridor it seems to happen water. a lot. Mm-hmm. Tiny tunnels, mm-hmm. tiny quarters, yeah. whatever he's got there. Uh, duck to work. And so they can put the dog in to go after him. So, yeah. I mean, but I mean, that basically it makes the dog the boogeyman of the first half of the movie. It is. That's why yeah. I was like, why is this movie called this if, like, the people under the stairs aren't the villain? Yeah, right now it's like, Kinja. it's, yeah, it's exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, okay. I get it. So you're like you're you're very focused on like oh, this is what I was sold. There's That's what I'm told. Under well, when you give it a title like that, yeah. it's very specific, and yeah. we want to know we want to get there. Yeah. Okay. I got you. I guess yeah, I, I've seen like, it a okay. long time ago, so it's like yeah, I know what it is. You right. know, so mm-hmm. it'll, it'll, oh no, yeah. I want to get there. I don't want to get there quick. Yeah. Mm. yeah I, I get. Yeah, you well, you're not, then you're not getting there for a long time. No, <laughs> not a long time. And, and when you get there, is it? You know. No. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> and the, the amount of screen time this dog had was concerning me. I was yeah. like, this was these, a lot of work for dogs. These four dogs, you mean? Yeah. There were four yeah. dogs. I, I saw the credits because I was worried. So I was like, <laughs> yeah. I need to look at this. But, four of them. Yeah. I was like, this is a lot of work for dogs to do. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. So. Oh, those are some mean, mean dogs. What are they? Mm-hmm. Pink Rob, Doberman? Rottweilers? Yeah. yeah. And I like the, uh, I'm more like the fake dog head that was it. Oh, yeah. The that puppet. Was, yeah. 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 That's the gets punched. A couple of bigger teeth. Okay. But, uh, and it was jumping out a little bit. When, when he stabs the dog on accident, was that CGI for a second there? The way the head like sl- slapped to the side? Uh, it kind of so. looked I like it. I don't think it was. I think that's a doped dog or yeah, something. Yeah, I was going to tell you that. Oh, yeah. God, no. That's- well, I think that's, well, that's more humane than, than shooting. Or, uh, or, a puppet? Or, a puppet wouldn't yeah, have worked in that, that situation? Just the way that its musculature falls and its skin. Yep, it's that, like, and that it was so like worth it for this movie to do that, right? Yeah. To shrink a dog for this movie. because it looks real. I was going to do it. Otherwise, I don't buy it. I yeah, go, it's exactly. a puppet. I want reality. Yeah. Um, so within the house, the dynamic is that uh, there's the man and the woman. I think that's all they're identified as. Mommy and, and daddy. Mommy and daddy. Yeah. yeah. And I hate how they call each other that, too. Yeah. I really don't like it's that. Like yeah. fucking, it's really like gross. Pence at this point. Mm-hmm. It's really Mother. Gross. Is that, uh, you know, trying to, again, it's establishing this idea of the parents as the, mm-hmm. the, 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 the dominant force of inside the household they rule the inside of this house right mm. and their rule is did you get the impression that it was like a heavy like religious um authoritarian well yeah because i mean the whole the whole thing was you know hear no evil see no evil all that bullshit yeah everything was about sin and you can't be you can't sit and you know everything with alice was her her evil thoughts and all that bullshit. Yeah, I don't know if she had a crucifix in her room. and I think Yeah. She, I think she did. I know she had a needle point on the wall about um, yeah, a, a child should be seen and not heard. Right. And their favorite yeah. catchphrase is, burn in hell! Yeah. 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 These yeah. are some weird people. They sure are, come. <laughs> yes. Indeed. Especially the dad. How come? And his suit. Well, he's what got a bondage suit. About? He's got a gimp suit that, <laughs> that he, he puts on in. for no reason. For no, for no reason. reason. Well, that's his hunting suit. But well, like guess. the time you waste putting that shit on for what? It doesn't. It doesn't add. In. If anything, it hinders you because it doesn't seem like he can see shit in that. Yeah. A, or turn his head. He's got the Batman situation going on where he can't even fucking turn his head. Yeah. Is it like a suit of armor or something, or is it just like this will make them weird? It's and, like the. It's, uh, it's like it's the people who wear the. Uh, they wear compression suits because it, it does something for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know. Ah, uh, I see. I feel it, like it's a, a fetish a, thing. But that's a, Well, I think it, it is. Yeah. In his case, it, it, I think that's yeah. what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Sure. I, I was wondering if it was some. It was some sort, like you said, like some sort of armor because it's clearly made of leather, and they have like a horde of people stashed under the stairs. Possibly. Maybe, maybe it's so like you know they can't get like scratched or grabbed or that kind of thing. Possibly. But know. every time we see him wearing it, he's running around the upstairs in the hallway. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, but he would you like, but that's because he's got intruders in his house. Usually, he but would. Why be do you using need to wear that to hunt intruders? That's what I'm saying. Like, what's the point of it? it? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. 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 And that's I think it's it. also it's to imply that the yeah, uh, not. you know behind the normal house, there's weirdness inside that's usually led by a, you know yeah. some repressed uh, religious fundamentalist people who, yeah, in their spare time because the, the crazy religious people are always the kinkiest. Ones, yeah, and they, yeah, in, in and theory, the theory, theory, yeah, <laughs> and always the ones with something to hide. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's implied that he abused his or abuses Alice. I was actually surprised at how. Uh, 
low key that was because I'm like, you know, it's like that's what's going to be going on. They abuse this girl because later we find out that she's not actually their daughter. Yeah, uh-huh. and I'm like, okay, so that's. But it was more about like punishing her for or trying to keep her virtue intact, right? Because yeah. they're because the, 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 you described like the whole point is like they collect or kidnap kids, mm-hmm. try and mm-hmm. find the perfect one. Is what I get. Yeah, and every time they find something wrong, they deform one and then send them to the basement. Right. So they've been collecting all those people downstairs. Why do you just why, why don't just, you why? just kill them? Yeah. yeah what's why the do you point? collect them in the basement? I don't know because you, you can't say they don't believe in killing because they kill Ving Rhames off. Yeah. Pretty substantially. Mm-hmm. And they're excited about it. Yeah, they're very they happy are, about yeah. it. And they'll kill. I mean, they're trying to kill Roach, the other child who yeah. escaped yeah. from the basement, is yeah. now in the walls. And they killed Spencer rather quickly because yeah. they were just waiting for him in the van. That's very true. Yeah. Real quick. Well, and so they're not against that. They have so much concern about intruders, right? And mm-hmm. they take so much joy in like killing them when they come into their house. Yes. Why not use these, like, tortured people to be your security system? Like, they're clearly, like, kind of have abilities, you know? So why not just, you know how, like, in zombie movies people will use, like, they'll chain up a zombie and that's, like, the, yeah. the, mm-hmm. how they protect their shit? Like, do right. something like that with these people under the, people yeah, under the stairs. Know. Instead of just locking them up and, like, what like what purpose do they serve? I well, agree. Why do they keep them around yeah. if yeah. They're, they're, like, the discards? See, this is where I don't get, because if I'm working on, like, Wes Craven making some type of metaphor here, then the people who live under the stairs or the people who are underground is, like, the working class or something like that, but they don't contribute in any way. No, yeah. they do nothing. Household. They are just prisoners mm-hmm. yeah, down there. There's no purpose to that. Yeah. Other, you know. Which mm-hmm. kind of makes their revolt, because that's what's eventually going to happen. The people rise up and defeat the you mm-hmm. know authoritarian types who live in the uh, above them in the house, the rich right. people. Mm-hmm. But it's like, but I, you know, you're, you're missing something here yeah. Wes, mm-hmm. to actually you know sell this. It's like you have to have them be security apparatus or something like yeah, that. There's no up, reason to keep them alive some, for some reason. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. You could be down there whipping them like. Whoosh. Yeah, because he's not. They also you know make the inference. Well, it's more than inferred that uh, the family's cannibalism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you see them. I mean, well, they think they, they're they they're actually. He's, he's gutting Ving Rhames. Yeah. Right, yeah. And eating pieces of him while throwing it to the people yeah. under the stairs. Mm-hmm. And at the beginning, I think that one of the first shots that we see of them in the house, they're sitting in front of the fire or whatever, and he's sitting in his. But he's eating ribs. And at that point. Right. You know, maybe we don't know at that point what's going on, but we assume, you know, the big bloody ribs. It's like he's actually eating people. Well, he yeah. says something about the buckshots, and he picks out right. the, yeah. the, right. the bullet. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so true. clearly it's something he's recently hunted, but mm-hmm. actually you know, being human. Yeah. 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 So they're sick and twisted, and they have a bunch of people in a corral. Is is that why the they stage. keep him? Like once in a while, he just like lets one out and hunts it. Maybe is that why? See, that, and so it's like a most dangerous game kind situation. Of. That would be sure. a more interesting movie. Like yeah. do that story then. Feels like they're hunting in like a caged area, though. Yeah, it's, like, it's not really hunting if you can yeah. corner them in a cage and it's like, shoot them. It's like those hunting facilities in right. Africa yeah, where they like yeah. have the lions come right up to you and you shoot them. It's yeah. not really different from the you know privileged people hunting in Africa that we hear about now. Yeah, yeah. it's That's really true. no different. Yeah. Well, well, and I'm thinking about it though. Maybe they do serve a security purpose because uh, he keeps the treasure room. Is in the basement right. behind yeah. them. Yeah, that no mean, one's going to. That's true. That's true. Anyone gets yep. in, they're not going to go in there. All those but is that the singular true. reason that the screenplay says that they are there? Is basically they're the moat, right? right? Yeah, they're protecting you from your, or the dragon protecting the treasure. It actually room. makes right. a lot of sense. It does make yeah. a lot of sense because that's uh, that. As you say, this is the only reason that we're given. It seems mm-hmm. at this point, or mm-hmm. that we can decipher from what's going on. Yeah. Right. So as far as uh, I'm concerned, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's all they're there for. Uh-huh. Done. Yeah, because they so serve no other purpose. <laughs> well, no. fool turns out to be an extremely resourceful uh, little kid. Uh, I mean, the actor who plays him too. It seems like I don't know how old this kid is. He says he's thirteen. I'm like, okay. Probably sure. around that age, yeah. yeah. So I, I can't works. guess kids. No, I don't. So I have I, no I fucking can't. idea. They said he's thirteen in the movie. I'm, I don't know I'm, how old I'm he is. Prepared <laughs> to go with that. Uh, he's probably about twelve. That makes sense. But I guess he gets a little bit of a head start because the uh, the couple believes that only Ving Rhames and Spencer are robbing their house because they come to the house dressed up as, uh, you know, uh, like a, a meter reader or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then they catch Ving Rhames in the house. So, but they don't know that the kid is in there, at least. So that gives him a little bit of a head start so he can meet Alice and find out that there is, like, you know, people living in the walls. This guy Roach, he has no tongue. 
who's, you know, upset father, because apparently he has been loose for a long period of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the father goes around blowing holes in the walls in order to find... Then I thought that was interesting because later, like, eventually the police are called. For gunshots, yeah. Yeah. And come into the house, and uh, there's no... Nobody's making comment about these gunshots, you know, holes in the wall or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. It all gets covered up. It's very convenient. It is very convenient. Yeah. And the fact that the cops don't question... I mean, they do question the, the little girl's room. But they're just like, oh, she's not here anymore. She left us, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. And they're just okay with that answer. I'm like, you yeah, just yeah, got sure. a call about child abuse and you're not going to question the child's room anymore. Mm -hmm. You're just accepting that she's dead. Yeah. And a, a better way to write that is just like have a scene where like you see her like 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 pushing a stack of bills towards them being like, just forget about this or something, right? Like they, you're, they're using their privilege and their power to like make the problem go away. Right. Like, why Something. Why was that scene not there? Why would... Yeah, why... Them as being as rich as they are. Yeah. Because otherwise they're just stupid cops. Exactly. That, like, why yeah. not make it... Like, they... Use, you, you're telling us they have all this power and privilege. They're yeah. evicting all these people and, you know, making all this money. Let's see that throughout the story, then. So, <laughs> a crooked cop scenario would be more believable than a stupid cop scenario. Yeah. 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 Maybe so. Maybe. Maybe, but I mean, I figure... I mean, maybe this is my thing with uh, with Wes Craven. It, you know, it's like, I think, you know, I think maybe we said this on some of the other films that, that we've looked at. Well, have we done anything else that he wrote and directed? Because everything else is like Kevin Williamson right, wrote. Right. Because yeah. in the modern era, this can't be the first one that we did that he wrote and directed. But anyway, I guess what I'm getting at is, I don't know, like, he doesn't strike me as a very visual filmmaker. Mm -hmm. You know, he's... He's good enough at staging and all that, so I don't really get lost when I watch the movie where we are, who's talking to who, right. or anything yeah. like that. But it seems like his the first thing that's uh, in his mind, he's trying to write it like a, a literate screenplay in the fact that uh, the the social comment that he's making is leading, right? Right. And then he's applying, you know, it's like who all these characters are. And then it's like when you so when you watch it and then you go like well wait a second you know it's like how come this you know or maybe this isn't the most interesting way of doing this or you know right. why are these people doing you know behaving this way what do we think about uh, as far as his most like visual piece what do we think about Red Eye I like Red Eye well I, yeah, yeah I do too yeah, yeah I think I it's a very movie. solid like quick I want to have in yeah, and out thriller I dig that movie I think that feels maybe that's more visual I mean that feels like more. Or, or there was less script to that movie, more like a sense of tension and whatnot, and things mm -hmm. were going I, on. I don't remember it being a very talky movie. Yeah, he's trying to. I think with Red Eye, that was him trying to do like uh, kind of Hitchcocky and suspense. Right. Yeah, but that's not his script either. I don't. Think. Well, no, no. Yeah, but I think mm -hmm. it relies more on his. Well, that's the thing. At that point, it's like post scream, and so he's got budgets, and no. he's got you know. Great A cinematographers, and you know, I mean, everything from the, the Scream era forward oh, yeah. all has that nice little polished, you know, right? Uh, Miramax, not Miramax, Dimension Films, you know, yeah, gloss to it. He's yeah. got those resources at that point mm -hmm. after doing what he did with Scream, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is universal, I mean, right? Yeah, that's true. Well, but we also discussed yeah. this is the giving you a million and a half dollars, and then you do whatever you yeah. want, but that's all you get, yeah. This one was, uh, Six million. Oh, was, oh, was it? Okay. Well, I mean, well, I mean, we'd have to look up then. I thought that Carpenter got less, but it's possible Carpenter, Carpenter was less, less mm -hmm. of a draw. No one gets Carpenter any credit. <laughs> yeah, take a million and a half and fuck <laughs> off. Well, I mean, even looking at this, I'm like, well, he got, you know, I mean, of the two sets of films uh, from this era, then, it's like, you know, um, Craven got, I mean, obviously they built like a full set of this house, interior. Sure. Yeah, and the alone. extras, mm -hmm. you know. Whereas you look at like uh, Prince of Darkness, uh, you know, it's like you gotta go. I mean, I assume that that's those are built sets somewhere. It's not like all inside that church, but it feels like a lower budget movie. Even they live in some ways feels like a lower budget movie. And in uh, in Shocker, yeah. you've got all sorts of visual effects and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. who knows? Maybe uh, maybe Craven got a little bit more money out of the deal. I'll bet he did. Because he was the Nightmare on Elm Street guy. Yeah. And yeah. Halloween was hell and gone from... Right. I, I think, yeah, no, Car Carpenter gets all the credit later on, while Wes Craven probably got it more as he went in along. In the moment, in yeah. yeah. Yeah, in the moment. That makes in sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carpenter, yeah. 
feels more right. Well, Fool goes through this movie and he, uh, you know, is able to escape uh, with the help of, um, you know, I guess all the um, affected peoples under the stairs mm. and yeah. in the walls uh, help him get out. And so he's able to escape. Uh, Alice is unable to come with him, and so he gets back out into the world. And this is like, uh, it feels like it's more than halfway through the movie. Yeah. And it, yeah. it kind of deflates the tension. I thought it was going to yeah. end. Honestly, I thought that was the too. end. Like when, that was it. Yeah, when he goes back to his apartment with the gold coin, he's talking to his grandpa or whatever about it. I was like, I am credit. Right. Like, I thought, yeah, I yeah. thought I was like, this is yeah, the end. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because no. you're out. Yeah. yeah you're out. <laughs> But because he's no kid, uh, no thirteen-year-old kid is that thinking of anybody else in the world where he's going to go back. Well, especially because he said he had the the gold coin was worth enough to pay for the surgery and the rent until the year two thousand, uh-huh. which like just buy a house at that point. Don't rent if you have that much money. Right, yeah, but get out. like, yeah. but that kid hears that and still wants to go back in that house. Like, save his friend. Yeah. Yeah. That's Fr- it. Friend. I use that term loosely. Friend. Yeah. Like yeah. person well, he met mean, once. I think, I think he's well, he's probably thinking she saved me, I gotta save her. I think that's it. There's yeah. a bond there. It's like, you know, there's a human being suffering and I am going to liberate them from their oppression because he also wants to get the uh, well, I mean for a little kid version, but he wants to rescue he knows that there's people under the stairs. He he's the one who calls in the cops, which is which is a good smart next move, you yes. know. Instead of going back into the house, being like, "I'm going to let the appropriate people deal with this," yeah. that is a yeah. good move. But so he does call That's the authorities move, yeah. with the child abuse claim, but uh, he does. But he it. already has no faith in them because he follows them there and sneaks in while yeah. the cops are there. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Yeah, I'll call the cops, but I don't believe you're going to help." Yeah, it's so only I'm a distraction, so too. I can get in there. Yeah, and get her out. Yeah, Oops. yeah. <laughs> This is after the dog has been killed. Yeah, the dog gets stabbed. Yeah. Because he puts a bayonet on a shotgun. I saw the bayonet, and I'm like, he's going to put that on a shotgun. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. This I want to see that. This is like how this dude gets off. It's like he's got like a weapon gimp suit fetish, you know? Yeah, he does. And he's got a little, uh, little trap, little trap to undo to get more weapons because he goes into his office and undoes the desk mm-hmm. and pulls yeah. out another shotgun. Yeah. yeah. Like this, this he had like, like a 50 this. caliber like a machine gun in there with like a yeah. ammo belt and all mm-hmm. that yeah. that we saw at one point. <laughs> There's yeah. all he sorts could, of shit. He could kill Roach. Yeah. The mm-hmm. secret, but he'd have to destroy the, the house. The secret compartments and traps and passageways in this house are just endless. 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 I like them. But they're endless. <laughs> I've been in houses like that. Have you? I know that sounds crazy, but I have. But it was a haunted attraction. Yeah. But it was this guy. It's in uh, is it Mount Carroll, oh, Illinois. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Raven's Grin <laughs> Inn. Yeah. Oh, is that? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. It's crazy like that. Like the guy took a house and like built and tunneled and keeps building mm. new crazy shit into it. Like oh yeah. It. So it can be done. Like Only it. because I've been in one. <laughs> I'm like, huh? You can take a thing that looks like a house on the outside and inside it's uh, a maze. I like it. Of craziness. Yeah. Where like you keep Winchester the people. Winchester Mansion. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Exactly. I like it. How do we feel about the the lead in this movie being a kid? Like, how do we feel about him leading this movie? Because I kind of have realized that I don't like movies that are like the lead character is a kid nope, going I'm, on a mission. I don't unless either. It, I don't it's, like it. Unless it's a kid's, kid's movie, movie yeah. or more centered yeah. on kids. Like, well, like an adult movie, especially a horror is, movie. It's like, weird yeah. to I'm compare it, like, but like Sandlot, that's a bunch of kids, but that's supposed to be a bunch yeah. of kids doing all that that's, stuff. That's and why a like, kid leading an adult movie, I agree. I'm, not, I'm yeah. just like, I care less about the movie. Exactly. It's like, I don't care. Exactly. Well, I'm not going to kill this kid. Especially, exactly. You know, the stakes are tempered. Like the yeah, stakes are so limited by the main character being a kid. And like, like I said, it was just the uh, example of this movie's unwillingness to commit to one theme or the other. Uh, yep. Like, when I was yeah. watching this movie, I was like, is this supposed to be funny at certain points? Yeah. They, yeah. 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 There's parts that are uh, then, But yeah. then it would be really fucking dark the next second, and yep. then it would be right. really funny. And I was like, like, I don't Home understand Home Alone, this. but then we go to really dark places. Exactly. And just like, eh, it's what are we doing? Odd. Mm-hmm. And it's it, there's I don't know. There's something about the 90s that I feel like they did that a lot. Mm. Uh, maybe I'm thinking this this because this was also around the same time as the TV It came out. I'm just like I feel like this was a, a theme that happened very often, and I'm not sure I've, I've ever really been on board with it. Yeah, I that, agree. That scene when the dog first comes in the house when they're first breaking in and uh, Bing Rams hides behind the couch and he's like, "You stand here and distract him, and then I'll hit him with like the pipe or whatever he yeah. has." And then 
like the dog comes in and stands there and stops and he's just staring at the kid but the kid's not moving so it's like the dog can't see him what the fuck was that yeah. was it rough. seriously that's what i'm saying is it are we supposed to seriously believe that this dog can't see you unless you're moving uh, that's my the, default the to go for any animal i come across it's like if i don't move i'm fine yeah. I, I think it is because he's a child. He's a small person, so that, you know he walks in. I don't. I don't know dog psychology. But that dog had just been trying to <laughs> yeah. kill that kid the scene before yeah. that. Yeah. It do, yeah. But it he walks no in. Sense. The kid's there. And then Ving Rhames is like, "What? Do you leave?" And the dog jumps at him. So it's a, it's yeah. a played for a comedy. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, wow. But it's totally worth it. <laughs> it's uneven comedy to be sure. Yeah. The whole yeah. way through the movie. So normally, I love horror comedy. I think it's great. I, I love that contrast. I kind of need that contrast most of the time, because I don't, otherwise it gets too dark for me a lot of time. But in I this like case... I like the darkness. Yeah, same. Yeah. I'm all for the darkness. <laughs> just pick a theme and stick with it. That's right. my Give me my, the darkness. My well, I love horror comedy, but in this case, it's just like, it's the wrong kind of comedy, I guess. I don't know. It's it feels it feels way too child movie for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. it feels more like a kid. This feels more like a kids movie. It does, and then you know it's and rated then, R and it has well, a whole lot of really? R rated no, stuff if, in it. Well, oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's bloody as hell. Well, but it feels like, but that feels like fake. But it, but it's like it feels like it feels like fucking Goonies, and then the next minute Bing Rhames is being filleted, hanging upside down. I'm like, well, just it's, fuck, it's not a kids movie. Full like it's point shot in the chest five times, and yeah. then he's being filleted, and then, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very. I go back and forth. I'm just like, Ugh. I just wonder. It's like, I mean, I get that, right? Because I guess I, you know, I've never really been a great fan of this movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and I think maybe that's probably. I mean, I'm playing devil's advocate to myself here, right? Yeah. Because I think that's why. Like, I don't own it. I yeah, own other right. Wes Craven movies. I don't yeah. own this one. And it's kind of, I guess, that thing where, you know. It does kind of, it feels like it's a little bit of a, uh, well, I guess a kid's movie because you got a kid leading it, but I also try to sit there and go like, well, what was he intending? Is this our problem? Yeah. You know, that right. we're sitting here going like, well, it's got a kid in it, and so we expect it's a kid movie, and he's like, it's got a kid in it, kid in it, because it's a story about this kid. And so it's like, you're bringing the, yeah. you know, you're expecting it, or the title, people under the stairs, and so we're bringing, you know, the like, well, where are the people under the stairs? He's like, yeah. well, it's not really about it. But you called it that you're... Right. You know, that's well, what you called your movie. And that, I would say it's not entirely our fault. Yeah. It's like, well, we're supposed to, we're expecting something that you kind of said you were going to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then we don't really get it for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I was not expecting, like, a urban treasure hunt movie. Right. right. At all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like... That's more what it is in a horror movie. It's, it's Black an Goonies. urban treasure hunt. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. We figured it out. It's what? Black Goonies. Black Goonies. <laughs> yeah. Figured it out. That may be. It's also my favorite be. candy, Black Goonies. That's right. I like. I hate to think that people think this way, but it's possible that somebody looked at a spreadsheet somewhere and said, like, you know, who rents Wes Craven movies the most, and here's the target possible, audience. Yes. Yeah. And so we're gonna. It's, it's entirely like, possible. It's rated R, but they're gonna see it at some point anyway, be it on HBO or whatever. I don't yeah. know. You know, I mean, I didn't look it's into entirely. The, well, I'm sure every studio has that research on hand. Yeah, they are doing. And that's research. where like, no, you'll be fine having a kid as a central, you know, character in your movie. Sure. Don't worry, <laughs> because they're gonna be one of the ones watching. It. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely, I was in my 20s. I don't even think I was 20 years old when I saw this, right? 91, you said it came out? Home? Yeah. yeah. Colin, uh, Colin just went away. Colin's yeah. doing math. Yeah, doing math. Right so, <laughs> not, tw not 20. Um, so, uh, the. Uh, what was He's still there. Like yeah. He, fool, no, Fool's out. He's no, out of the house. Oh, I'm still there, yeah. <laughs> Fool gets out of the house, then gets back into the house for right. the second act of the movie, right. where, or the second... It's like the second act, yeah, basically. For the sequel. Sure, yeah. <laughs> right, where he's going to break these people out. And I maybe this is another thing that happens whenever you have a kid as a lead in your movie. Uh, you know, you guys were talking about the sense of danger maybe isn't there the same way, but it also seems like he's overconfident and overcapable. I mean, as your hero, these are qualities that if he was five to ten years older, I don't think we'd have as much of a problem with sure. him being like gung-ho and doing all this stuff because it's like, yeah, you have the life experience to be able to do it. But he's 13, so it's like, how mm -hmm. much, what are you actually going to be able to do, yeah. you know, going in and fighting these people all by yourself? You know, there's, they're adults and they've got guns and fetish suits. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't even find a dude with a fetish suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
<laughs> I'm over 30. So. I mean, isn't it just kind of like a power move of like, you see I'm willing to wear this shit, you really want to fight me? Like, I feel like that's the first, like, defense of the fetish suit, right? <laughs> you see a guy coming at you with that and you're like, I'm just He's not like, even nope. going to bother, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. No, this guy's <laughs> yeah. serious. Yeah. I'm done. Mm-hmm. Well, he does uh, a bunch of other crazy shit, too, too. He's extremely, uh, this is, uh, uh, sorry, the father in the fetish yeah. suit. Yeah. Extremely jubilant whenever he, uh, you know, I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. I mean, it's yeah. really weird. It's it like, it's very weird. like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family. Yeah. It's it's two, feels like, it feels more like two yes, than the first one. An eccentric one. Yes, family yes. who gets off on killing people, first yeah. of all. And, I mean, they end up, what, the flaying Ving Rhames in the basement wearing a, a smock and everything. It feels very much like that. It it's what crazy feels, family. I think what feels gross about this one in comparison to Texas Chainsaw is that they're rich and, like, powerful and have status and so like mm. they don't have a reason to be doing this other right. than they want to. Other than they want yeah. To. Yeah. But they I don't agree. live like rich people. I mean they have a house but the house they is in a, a state of... put a ton of money into that house. That's true but it still looks like the house is in a state of decay. There's dead flies all over the places. Like paint falling off the yeah. walls. Yeah, They've that, got like, damage all over the place. Yeah. That's the bathroom upstairs? Yeah. That's what feels like the other house. All the time? Yeah. Like the dead flies and stuff because it's always sealed up. But nobody's right. cleaning it. Yeah. Nobody's taking yeah. care of it. Yeah. I mean, it, it is amazing that they can do the transformation into like, look at what a perfect house this is when the cops come over. But before yeah. that, it's like, it's kind of dilapidated. Um, and it's because they have all their money. Like, you know, sane people keep it in a the bank. They've got this room where they just have sacks and sacks and cash. Just actual piles. money bags. It's all over yeah. Yeah. It's just piles of crumpled up bills, even. Like, it's yeah. not even banded together. The rats together are going to start eating that yeah. soon yeah. if, if uh, uh, Bad Boys 2 has told us anything. <laughs> so the rats will eventually get to it and start eating it, and that'll be a problem. Uh-huh. Then it's all over for you. It's all over. Yeah. Yeah. So it's but, like they yeah. have the money, but they're not they actually using it. They do, but it's like it. they just, it doesn't matter to them. Like, they don't care about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's part of the thing. Like, they're rich, but they don't really give a shit about anything. They don't give a shit about their money. That's either. egregious. Yeah. Well, in their in the well, horror no movie money. logic, yeah. and to basically you know keep on twisting the 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 parental unit into this evil thing, uh, they are brother and sister. Yes. We find out they're I an guess. incestuous couple, and apparently they are not the first. Right. Uh, because oh, yeah. a fool's grandfather. It explains to him. It's. Oh, I wish I knew that actor's name because Ben Cobb or yeah from Bill Demolition Cobb? Man. Yeah, Bill Cobb. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, he explains to him that uh, from, this has been from, going on for. I know. What you, I still know what you did last summer. That's what he's from. <laughs> yeah, I'll name the obscure horror movies that these <laughs> actors are from. I'll do it. I'll t- make that sacrifice. Well, uh, but he go. explains that this has been going on for generations. Right. Right. They, they, it used to be a funeral home, and then they got real estate and all this other stuff. So that's why they're all so twisted. Yeah. Yeah. And all goofy like they are. Don't have yes. any kind of interest in money or anything else. Um, there is like a little bit of a subplot, I suppose, that uh, at this point when Fool is making his Fool's errand and running back into the oh, house. Oh, I see what you did there. Ordered it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bravo. I had that one prepared. No, I didn't. Yeah, I was going to no, It felt like you had that one teed up for a little bit. No. Oh, it came right <laughs> off the top of my head. Okay. Comic <laughs> genius. That's yeah. right. Quick-witted and timing is impeccable. Um... I forgot where I was going. Oh, the the, the, the neighborhood. Quick-witted, impeccable. Forgot where I was going with this. The uh, the neighborhood, the community at large, uh, gathers outside the front door of this house. Yes. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand why she opened the door in the first place, other than screenplay said that she had to. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Why did she? Yeah. With the first the, time. For the knock, knock, for knock. the girl. Yeah. Because the second time she opened, because they said it was the it cops. Was the cops. Right, yeah. yeah. Does it also time. feel like a big jump from the suburban to urban? Like, because it feels like the building they're in is in the city and where their yeah, house is like in a, is in the suburbs. Like suburb, yeah. like, it feels like too big a jump going from one location to the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all these people masked in the right. middle of the night and, and walked and over to the house. to the suburban house. It yeah. feels like they should have been in the city if that's where the problem was. Or, like, you know. It says they own 50 buildings, but. Yeah. <laughs> These people have put so much money into their house that they have stairs that turn into a ramp. They have trap doors. They have all this shit. They, do. they don't have a goddamn people on their front door to look and see who's Very out true. there. Yeah. Or any a sort of thing. way of seeing who's on their front like step. surveillance cameras? Yeah. Right, because they, they have, have enough electronics in there to turn fucking steps into a slide and yeah. close all doors and everything. They can't have a surveillance camera yeah. or a people on their door. Yeah. Yeah. 
Seems odd. So the <laughs> priorities are all over the place. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I mean, the, the, the community turns up. I guess like, what's the the what's what's happening here? It's like the you know you have the it is kind of like a revolt, right? Yes. It's like the entire community is revolting against their oppressors, the uh, the, the landlords. And the fool discovers that. Well, I guess people. there's two things that happen there. There's um, there's the fight with the because they eventually we come to the climactic. Uh, the villains must get theirs at the hands of uh, the people that they've done wrong. Yes. Uh, mom is out in the the like foyer area, and she gets into a battle with uh, Alice. Alice, right? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think how that went, but yeah, she dropped Al- down from the ceiling at one point yeah. and the front door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And was there a big fight there? I can't remember. Right now. I don't remember how she. Well, she gets got knocked killed. out, and then she disappears for a little bit, and then she shows back up to confront Alice because yeah, she does well, she get got knocked the knife out. In her Al- <sighs> well, Alice slams her head into the ground, yeah, and we don't see her for a while, yeah. and then she shows up back in the kitchen with a knife and all that yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. And then she runs at her, but then the people from the stairs come and hold her up, and there's still a whole knife thing. Yeah, because yeah, fool turns them loose, right? And he has found the dynamite. That uh, uh, the, apparently this whole house is laced with dynamite, like you do. Well, I mean, how you have to keep people from robbing your shit. So you blow up your house. Yeah. Naturally. That'll show them. Naturally. Yeah. You blow yeah. up all that money you have, too. Well, we couldn't yeah. figure I out how to protect this my worked. money, so I'm going to blow it up. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, they did. Like, this was like the, the tripwire, uh, you know, on some of the. Yeah. Well, I don't even, I'm not even sure where we were in the house at that point. Again, it just, for me, it just. It just Goes with my theory that they don't really give a shit. I know they're protecting. Doesn't feel like I know they they're do. protecting their money, but I don't think they really give a shit. Well, it's the if they have gotten past uh, us, the dog, and the, the crazy people under house. The stairs, even. Yeah, if they've gotten this far, then uh, you're going to go boom. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it's more like a game than anything, really. Yeah. Well, layers and layers of paranoia. Yeah. But uh, fool is able to detonate. The, uh, the dynamite, the dynamite yeah. but somehow does not blow everyone to smithereens. No, nope. just the just the right areas. It just shoots <laughs> the money up in the air. Right, because I'm like, is, did Alice just die? Yeah. She blew up the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no. Most well, people should be up, flying through but, windows. I mean, she should, the house he, is so big, it only blows up part of it. I guess so. He That's should have blown up. two houses, remember, there Sean? Two yeah, houses. the house is <laughs> one house. It's very true. <laughs> the house with the house and its walls is basically what this movie is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the dad should have gotten blown up, but he gets blown back gets blown and into away, the yeah. Uh, yeah into the the the, the like decom- the body pit that they mm-hmm. have. You know, oh, the, right, yeah. I think it's yeah. the well. He yeah, uses the yeah. body pit. Yeah. Um, and fool somehow is protected because stone walls or whatever, but it blows this gigantic cloud of money out the you know out through the chimney and out through the windows. And, uh, and then you just see money like raining down yeah. on they the. They make it uh, rain. Indeed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody's got free money. Free money for everybody. Yeah. It's yeah. uh, everyone's dream. I would love money to rain from the sky. <laughs> but a lot of that money just burned. Well, this is true. true. Yeah. yeah. And then they go back and they'll find some coins and stuff and all that. Uh, gold coin. Yep. And the uh, the people under the stairs get free now to mm-hmm. explore and experience life. Uh, yep, because they'll be nice right. and well adjusted. All right, right? until the yeah. sun comes up and they're yeah. all going to be like, <laughs> yeah. I know. And they all just melt and yeah. burn. Yeah. I know. This is Guaranteed. like. They're all going to die in the sun. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. this they're, is not like a good idea. From exposure. <laughs> yeah. If it's Dad like, doesn't kill them, they'll, be, these people they'll be like the homeless plague on this city. That right. People yeah. will be like, be, where did they all come from? Right. And then they'll be rounded up. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are They're you? They're be bridge people. Yeah. Yep. You yeah. need caseworkers. You need halfway houses. Right. How much, what are the <laughs> taxes going to be on well, these yeah. people getting They're close? all disabled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in some they sense or another, so cut out or their eyes gouged out. Or yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there was the impression early because again, low key on this stuff, but it mm-hmm. sounded like you know. Well, he made it explicitly clear that it was see no evil, evil speak no evil, evil or hear no evil. Yeah. yeah. So you're but gone. She said something the effect that like the other boys eventually misbehave, and so you know, father cuts those parts, offensive yeah. parts yep. off, and I'm like, they're all castrated. Yep. But yeah. that's kind of. I don't know. See, I kind of like that subtlety in the in the late eighties and nineties. <laughs> but then, it, We're like, is that what he was saying? I'm not yes. sure if that's. <laughs> but yeah. then, do, but then, fool says something to the effect of like, "Don't you want to go outside because there's like sunlight, freedom, and women?" Is what he says. Yeah, he says women. Mm-hmm. He's yeah, which if they're all castrated, like, like ah. yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Well, maybe Sorry. they weren't. See, maybe it was just uh, hear no evil. Maybe it was no just wrote. Fuck no evil. Yeah. Or maybe it was just bad writing no where they eyes, didn't no check what they said and... earlier, a couple pages earlier. Yeah, worse. Probably. Well, yeah. We're, but then that's that's us hearing it one way when he actually wrote it consistent the entire way. No, <laughs> I heard both parts of those movies. They just didn't line up with each other. That That's how that was. He said, they, they mentioned the castration thing, and then he just mentioned the women thing. I mean, so. Just, yeah, but he, he didn't actually say castration. He just said they cut the bad parts off, but it was they either saw something, heard something, or did something, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's ears, eyes, and So and if, right. if you um, heard something, that's the bad part you cut the yeah, ears off. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I do think they really did castrate Roach, though. But they did. I but when did. he said they, she said specifically the boys when she said they cut the bad parts off. Mm-hmm. That's, that's quite possible. You know, I mean, like I said, that's why I made the yeah. influence. That's quite possible. But, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. We'll Their know. lives will we'll not be good right. from here on Because out. unfortunately, Wes Craven has passed away. So we will never know. And so we'll never know. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, too bad. He uh, yeah. died of uh, brain cancer, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. Like, um, to th- we just passed the anniversary as well. Uh, I think maybe a m- within the last month. Of how many years? Two years, two years, I think. Yeah. I think two years he's been gone. Yeah. And he was a titan of horror, mm-hmm. I still Indeed. think. For I mean, sure. for. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For he his did it all, like we said, he did it giant. many times in many decades. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he he made some shit. Yeah, an indelible mark that will not be mm-hmm. forgotten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. God bless him. Mm-hmm. May he rest. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, okay. <laughs> Should we talk about the uh, American Horror Story comparison? Absolutely. Fucking hell! <laughs> the entire first season of American Horror Story was ripped off from, from this movie. movie. <laughs> everything yeah. about it. Everything. Like, the the fucking gimp suit. Fucking Jessica Lange's character is basically mommy. The French the maid house? looks just like yes. mommy. Yes, yes. The well, house sounds like looks I never just want to like watch it. American Horror Story. You know what though? But it's I, very different. Though, it's, but it's, it's very. Di- I mean, it's it is like stories. It, there's sure. oh, stories because there's like ten stories happening yeah. at once. But I, it, it, I think I think it is directly ripped off. But I actually really like it. the first season. Is the, the I think the best season. Really yeah. Good. I will say that. Um, but I'll yeah, Dylan McDermott wears that fucking gimp suit a bunch. In that. He does he? Well. Yeah. Mm. He wears it well. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to see him jerking off and crying at the same time? I mean, never. Well, I mean, don't watch that show because right. that happens on that show. That's, like, uh, second I mean, episode. Or maybe I do. I don't know. I, I think that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> that, You've never I thought that, about it before, I right? I, I won't know until I actually see him. Like, oh, all this right. Is genius. <laughs> never knew. Well, just so never knew I wanted to see that. <laughs> if you ever do watch it, just know it comes out of nowhere. There's awesome. no, there's right. no lead up to it. There's no real reason. Maybe for it. Maybe I have to watch this now to see how I feel about like yeah. That. I like moving the first forward. Season a lot. The first season is really good. Yeah, okay. Well, and if you think about like a lot of the major things that happen in that show, happen in like crawl spaces in the basement too. Yes. In the first season. Yep. So no, it's a house. What are you yep. gonna do? Yeah. Some point it's you a big change. house. Yeah. And I, you know, I won't spoil it. Well, but, but there are there are personalities kept in the basement. Yeah, that's what I'm sure. saying. Like yeah, that, yeah. the major plot points that yeah, happen yeah. in the basement are somewhat similar. Very is, much so. Bloody face in that one? No. Or is that a season That's the second two? one. Season okay. two, yeah. All right. It's the only thing I know about the, but Coven. The gimp suit is the same. Okay. Oh, yeah. there's is a little bit. I mean, it's the same idea. I mean, it's the same yeah. idea. In American Horror Story, it's it's shiny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so latex, there's probably. There's no, of, like, more cat woman there's than... No, uh, there's no metal studs anywhere. It's just shiny. Yeah. Oh, it's just latex. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, see that in the promo material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's always like, who's wearing it? That's the oh, mystery. Really? That's is the that mystery. The yeah. Who is it? Yeah. That's okay. the mystery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's decent. I like it. All right. But completely well, we ripped know. off. We know how we yeah. feel about completely that. Completely ripped off. Yeah. The imagery of that whole even, season was knocked off from this movie. Even like there was, when they showed the the um, exterior of the house, there's like the stone pillars. Uh-huh. I was like, is that the yeah. back step from American Horror Story? Right. She's talking to, to uh, Evan Peters. Mm-hmm. I think that's the same step. Well, and the, it looks the there's same. a fireplace poker that comes into play in yep. this movie that ha- comes into play in a very similar very, way in the first season of American yeah, Horror Story, too. Yeah, very so. much so. But what, yeah. yeah, but I was totally ripped off. That's the thing. It's down <laughs> like, Total ripped off. Like, the Fine. gift suit is one thing. The fireplace poker, you're taking it to a whole other level at that point. It's like, come like, on. Like, when you see Jessica, like, well, besides the red hair, when you see that character, like, you're like, oh, yeah. Th- yeah. That character's very much based on mommy. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, That's it. I think there it is. Well, I'll tell you what then, uh, listener. Thanks for sticking with us this far. What we're going to do is we're going to go around the room. We're going to answer some of your mail, and then we are going to tell you what we thought about the people under the stairs. You may think you know how it's going, but you don't. You never know how this is going to turn out. 
That's what makes it exciting. So stick with us. Uh, first of all, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Well, thank you, Igor. Oh, these guys can see that. I don't like that. Igor, go back. It doesn't to the fit stairs, right either. Please. It's a little loose. <laughs> it's got you know, like how. Believe me, you want it loose. Well, Igor yeah. is the person under the stairs. He is, yeah, I mean, he is. He's actually the person. He's the guy. But like yeah. the butt sag on his suit, you know? Uh, yeah. You, Which it makes okay. it look like, you know how it looks like when you get like a swimsuit that doesn't fit right? It looks like sure. you took a dump like a diaper. That's kind of what he's got sure. going on. Yeah. Do more squats, Igor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more squats. Well, thank you for bringing us the mail. How can the folks at home contribute to the fun that we're having here tonight on Facebook? Facebook.com slash the Night Free Show. What about on Twitter? At Sad Free Show. Can they email us? They sure can, Colin. It's Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. And you can also get a hold of us on Instagram, for or at least follow along. Life. That's right. For the time of your life at Saturday Night Freak Show, that's our handle. Hey, about the people on the stairs, HP wrote in. What up? Harry and Potter? said, uh, hey, Hewlett Packard? Mm-hmm. He said, uh, my, this is the second Wes Craven movie that I ever saw. It scared me real good when I was younger, and I rewatched it for the first time in years in honor of your 300th. So happy to say I really wow. enjoyed it. It's one of the few times Wes didn't have to deal with the studio meddling, and it shows by its unique but great story. Andrew John writes in. Thanks. Thanks Andrew says, congrats on the big 300. That's amazing. You guys are the best and make my week every time. Love Craven, and this movie is insane. I watched it way too young to understand the bondage gear and most everything else, but I watched it later in life, and I appreciate this movie. I have to rewatch it now for this. Oh, thanks, Uh, guys. I I still don't understand the bondage gear. Yeah. I'm, I'm way older. So, yeah. <laughs> still well, but maybe, thank you. Maybe thank we're you. not well-formed adults. Is that uh, is it us? Do you have to be a we well-formed adult to understand the bondage gear? I, I think know. we're well-formed in that feel, we don't know I it. Like I don't know. Was, I don't know. I feel like there was just a lot that he just wanted us to just think about. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to throw this at him. Yeah. See what I think about that. Well, Strange Tamer 90 says, I love this movie. I own the press kit for this movie. Oh. You can't go wrong with Wes Craven. And Schlock Snob. Oh, schlock snob. <laughs> Writes in, and he says, I saw it for the first time last year and was sad that I hadn't heard about it before. It's great. Also, I love seeing Everett McGill and Wendy Robbie, Big, Big Ed and Nadine, there you go, yep, from you Twin go. Peaks on screen together. They really do play a good couple. Uh, Novato Judoka. Johnny New Jersey. Johnny New Jersey. Says, <laughs> this on Monster Vision with Joe Bob was a constant staple of goodness. People under the stairs along with Tremors defined the TNT oh. channel for me. Oh, yeah, that sounds about right. That's yeah. how I watched it. Was Joe Bob. Uh, Rushmore 309 writes in, he just says it's a classic. Mm. Uh, so about our 300th episode, uh, Adam Kaler writes in and says, Congrats on 300 episodes. Thank Your you. canon reviews are really fun, and Over the Top was a blast. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> he says, I can't wait to see what movies you review next. I listen while getting my breakfast smoothie on the way to work, so the Saturday Night Freak Show is good for my health. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, P.S. Sean, I am not a robot. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you making that clarification. Also, that's <laughs> kind of fantastic. These are the things I need to know. If every uh, writer in could uh, make that clear, that would be great. What kind of smoothies do you get? Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. the same thing. Yeah, where like, do you go? What do yeah. you get? Where do you Probably go? Always Jamba the, juice or something. I'm always in the yeah. mood to know who's what kind of food. Do you get like extra getting? shots of something? Like, yeah. I want to know. Do you Tell get us. the protein? Do you get smoothie? peanut butter yeah. and almond milk in there? Yeah. I'm curious. <laughs> I want to know. What flavors? Come on. All right. I, I bet we go good with this movie though. It sounds like it, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, we had yeah. asked. Uh, yeah. Actually, I should preface this by saying we had asked uh, what were your favorite uh, freak show episodes. Uh, yes. Jason Madsack writes in and says Puppet Master was the first episode. I listened to, I'm so sorry. that one will always yeah. hold a place in my heart. So sorry. And from he there, with us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he says, from there, I bounced around to my favorite movies like Critters Two, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and The Giver. And after uh, that, I was hooked and have to li- and have listened to every episode. Woo! Every ep- awesome. That's awesome. Cow. awesome! That's awesome! He says, uh, Breaking and Breaking Two, Electric Boogaloo were great episodes. <laughs> <They> were great. <laughs> but I have to say, my favorite is the episode you haven't done yet. And that's oh. 1986's Troll. Uh, can't right. wait. Uh, <laughs> he says, I can't wait. And thanks for 300 episodes of an amazingly entertaining podcast. Looking forward to listening to 300 more. Oh, thanks, thanks man. That's, that's really awesome. sweet. Thank you, thank you. Very thoughtful response. Yeah, for reals. Thank you, guys. Uh, Travis Legler 
writes in and says, I love a lot of them. Maximum Overdrive was a personal favorite. That's a good one. But overly obsessed with the movie. Or he's overly obsessed with the movie. How can you not? Is that movie, <laughs> man? There's a lot to Yeah, if I ever about. if I ever come across the Vestron of that in disc replay, I'm gonna be like, oops. Yep. Maximum yeah, because that's we coming out. You. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh he says I kinda miss that Travis guy. He was funny to listen to and I really enjoyed his passion for movies even when he didn't like him. Jaws three and Exorcist three are fun, enjoyable movies. Thanks for the laughs and good times. I do admit I get excited for each new episode because it feels like I'm with a group of friends BSing about our love for movies. Because of your podcast, I now own Alligator on DVD yeah. from North <laughs> Korea. I think it was worth it. From Korea? From North Korea. Oh, hell North, yeah. Korea North Korea. Korea. Well, that's what he says. North Whoa. Korea, I think. They're that's exporting a... copies of Alligator? Yeah. Did you get a nuke with that? But he yeah. says, uh, keep on me making people laugh and try new movies. Awesome. That's awesome. awesome. That was really sweet. Man. Uh, Nick Hammond writes in and says, how could you not love Drunk Tom and all of his reign of fire scaling, knife wielding nuns on roller skate loving and word slurring antics. I love the arm wrestling on the over the top episode. Also, my favorite personal experience while down in the dank dark basement when I had to get pretty drunk to make it through Con Air. I was in rare form mm-hmm. for that episode. Nick has, of course, joined yeah, us on the right. show several we, times. We do love Drunk Tom and a congratulations to Drunk Tom for getting married this right weekend. Right be team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dom Cree writes in and says, "I'm with Nick. Over the Tom arm wrestling was awesome. To be honest, there are rarely you any over bad the Tom. Over the I think you said over the Tom, over the Tom. arm wrestling. <laughs> over the Tom, Tom wrestling. arm wrestling was awesome. Uh, to be honest, there are rarely any bad ones, and if they are, they're shocking dark. So bad, you guys are good. Right, that's pretty good, Dom. Uh, he says, shout out to the episodes where Gary was the only one who had the guts to review a robicide and the ones where Travis <laughs> delivered the Ghostbusters rap and any others oh, yeah. that he sung on. Uh, Mauricio Delgado says his favorite was The Rocketeer. Oh, nice. Um, he says a lot of stuff about The Rocketeer here. Um, and we Woody's, love The Rocketeer. Woody's Laugh. Who was Woody in The Rocketeer? I can't remember. It was face faithfully reproduced by one of you. I can't remember. That was a while ago. Woody? Before my time. talking about Woody? No, Woody in The Rocketeer. Because he says he loves all the L.A. history and Rondo Hatton, Betty, Neville, airships, the observatory architecture. Right. No, it's very good. Woody, who is Woody? Yeah, man? who's Woody in The Rocket? I don't know. Oh, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll go we'll back and, and watch it. Yeah, we'll figure that out. Uh, Basin Voorhees says, y'all are an all-star cast, but when Colin would host Sean, Brent, Travis, and Tom, discussions were heated but downright hilarious. <laughs> I'll never forget. B-Team! <laughs> BT. But uh, what we do in the shadows, Tremors, Home Alone for sure, Jaws 3D, Con Air, Hot Tub Time Machine, The Warriors, Jack Frost, and a bunch of others that defeats the purpose of this post request. So there you go. he's got a whole bunch of instead so of just one. So people like it when we get angry and yell? Uh, yeah, yes. Awesome. <laughs> I'm, here. I'm good at that. Uh, <laughs> Novato Judoka writes in and says, The Wicker Man is his favorite. That was, that was classic Angry Sean. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was, yes. Yeah. That, was, that was me that was my great. angriest, I would feel like. <laughs> that, was that, was a, that was a steady Angry Sean yeah. out the podcast, I feel. I love that. <laughs> well, he's got a question back for us. Have any of your three worst movies that you had to review changed since the last time you mentioned them during the Green Slime episode? That's a great question. He also yeah. says Happy Halloween. But oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm trying to forget. I mean, I know um, Mean Guns is still awful to still me. The worst Sharknado is still one of the worst things Sharknado I've ever seen. Bad. I don't remember I what the other one is. I mean, Shocking Dark's moved into that. Yeah, <laughs> Shock, Shocking Dark has moved into the top yeah. three, so yeah. that has changed. Oh, yeah. I do that for yeah. you yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, congratulations, yeah, That's Sean. definitely Thank in you. there. That's. I think that's probably the only one that's moved into that mm-hmm. circle. So we have a, a new worst movie for every generation of the podcast. Yeah. yeah. Every yeah. cast. Yeah. Yeah. Has the worst movie. Mean Guns, Shocking Dark. Yeah. All right. And uh, and the fucking your movie that you love so much Beyond, Beyond the Black, Black Rainbow. Rainbow. Well, no. Metal that's on mine. No, Metal Star. No, that was fun. Uh, we fucking rock opera. Oh, Repo, the oh, genetic Repo. opera. Repo. That might just be me at this point. I'm the Oof. only one holding a grudge for that one. I've, yeah, I guess I've never so. seen it. I've never seen it either. Oh. Okay. Well, one more. Yo, Jimbo Ice writes in and says, "Dead Heat." Which Hell's is yeah! Favorite Dead episode, Dead, probably because there's a lot of singing on that one. Also, that's a very full mailbox. Yep. That's amazing. Thank you guys so much. Woo, so yeah, much. I mean, again, oh, that's awesome. We can't believe that uh, you're actually there's uh, that many of you out there listening to us. Yeah. So great. Mm-hmm. But uh, we love it. We love you. Uh, mailbag love you is my all. favorite part of the show. Mm-hmm. I love it. So that's hopefully awesome. we'll be able to sit here and do 300 more. 
with the enthusiasm that you give us. Another six right, years. Another right, six years. Six years. Six years. All right, we should <laughs> cheers again, but we drank all the yeah, uh, champagne. has gone. Okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, so now we're, it's that time of the night when we're going to go around the table. We're going to review the people under the stairs. Colin. Yeah, Sean. Colin, you're first up. What did you oh, think? Oh, sweet. About the people under the stairs. Well, I mean... It feels like I've been specifically them, just the people. Oh, just the people. Nobody else in the movie. Just those people. Give them a review. Underwhelmed by the people under the stairs. The actual literal people under the stairs. Their makeup. uh, They're just people. Yeah. Yeah. People 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 under the stairs. I guess. Yeah. yeah, Like you, I think the first time that I saw that, I'm trying. I'm going back in time now, right? Uh, I remember that having some (laughs) similar sense of. You know, what are these people going to be? And then it's not about the people under the stairs. It's the people who live in the house. They keep. Kids chained up in the basement, or what a corralled in the basement. Um, and yeah, it's never been a favorite Wes Craven film of mine, but tonight, actually watching it, I did like it, you know, better than I've liked it any time before. Is it enough to recommend it? You know, I think that it is actually because I was surprised. I think, um, you know, I, maybe the last time I watched that, I was just watching it like as a straight horror movie. And it feels, you know, tonally, you know, all over the place. Um, the editing rhythms feel a little choppy. It could probably have done with some tightening. I mean, you should see Shocker. Uh, Shocker's batshit crazy. Have you seen it? I have not seen it. No. Nope. I have also not seen it. Never it's seen it. on my list, especially now that everyone said they haven't seen it. Like yeah. yeah. I have also not seen it, and I... Um, yeah, it's Look crazier. It it's crazier, but it suffers the same kind of. Uh, uh, not the same. Well, I, I, we'll have to watch yeah, it. Yeah, we'll watch <laughs> it. Um, but I guess the thing that I like about Wes Craven, I mean, compared to like, uh, you know, name a horror filmmaker working at this budget level in the genre right now. You've got like Mike Flanagan. You've got um, uh, James Wan. No, well, he's working at that budget level. He's anymore? high. He's higher than that. He's, he's studio gone. now. Yeah, yeah. And, but he used to. You know. Okay. To, so sure. if you look at the stuff that he used to do, um, Warren Kelly used to. Yeah. I don't know what happened to him. Um, uh, but you kind of have this. Uh, you know, now they're making these. Well, there. It's more about like the directors are more craftsmen. Yeah. How well can you orchestrate these events in order to elicit, uh, you know, to make it scary? And in some ways, they're making much scarier movies than, um, you know, Craven did post uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. But there is some kind of, like George Romero and like John Carpenter, some kind of like social uh, issue or something that it seems like um, uh, Craven is thinking about, you know? So it makes him like... It feels like he's a thoughtful filmmaker, right? Mm-hmm. He's not just trying to make an entertainment. And get me, don't get me wrong. Most of the time, I mean, I'm all for just straight entertainment. Yeah. But I mean, and even though maybe I don't completely agree with like the ultimate message that this movie, ha- you know, has at the very end. I mean, obviously, you know, you want everybody to be happy, you know, in life. <laughs> that we can agree on. But the method of getting there is like, yeah. But. uh I appreciate that he's thinking about these things and trying to, you know, use them as a uh, um, the genesis, a springboard for mm-hmm. his films. Um, that being said, uh, I mean, I well, I'm gonna, gonna recommend it based on that. It's like it was a more entertaining or more thought provoking movie for me this time around mm-hmm. than it was the last time around. Uh, so based on that, I'll recommend that you see it, but I still don't feel that I need to own it. So yeah. if that kind of puts yeah. it in a range yeah, of yeah, where yeah. I feel about this sure. movie, but you know, it's like, and I probably won't need to see it again until somebody makes me watch it in 20, 30 years. Yeah. Uh, you know, cause now that Wes Craven's dead, it's like, you know, that was probably, or this is the time that you go back and reappraise his, yeah. uh, his body right. of work. So, uh, yeah, I would say check out, you, you know, I mean, check out, uh, the people under the stairs. Sean, what do you think? Uh, I will agree that uh, I think Wes Craven is a more thoughtful filmmaker, especially in the horror genre, than maybe most um, uh, horror filmmakers are, although I think there is a lot of thought, and I don't think people give credit to horror filmmakers um, as far as the thoughts they put into the movies they make, that it's just it's more about the scares and the gore, and I think there's a lot more thought process put into horror movies than most people will give them credit for. Um, I think Wes Craven does that very well. Like you said, very thoughtful filmmaker. On the other side of that, this movie was this movie was fine. Um, seeing it for the first time, you know, 
it's it's a fine movie. It doesn't. Uh, I'm very baseline in this movie. Um, this movie is called The People Under the Stairs, and it took a long time for us to get to those people under the stairs. Mm-hmm. And when we got there, those people were very underwhelming to me. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I don't know what I thought I was going to get going into this movie, but uh, I mean, what I got was not, you know, not what I wanted. Um, as, but as far as like the movie that I did get, like I said, perfectly fine. Um, I think, like we talked about earlier, the fact that a a child is the um, the main actor and who's you know who the audience is supposed to use as their uh, as their surrogate for this movie. I mean, it's not. I don't know. It's not very interesting to me. Um, yeah, the movie's fine, but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't recommend it because I don't think there's anything really. Truly special about the movie. I think, uh, I don't know, I think a lot of people could have made this movie. Um, I, I don't think there's anything that's going to bring me back to this movie. Um, if someone said, hey, we're going to go watch this, I'd be like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I, I saw that movie once and I don't really need to see it again because there's nothing in that that's, uh, you know, really great and that would bring me back to it. So I'm going to pass on the people under the stairs. Mm-hmm. Michaela. Obviously, Wes Craven is one of the greats, and uh, as Sean was saying, a very thoughtful filmmaker, but the thought that was put into this movie did not show up on screen. I felt like it. it I he was starting something and starting to go with something and then never really completed that vision, I felt like. Mm-hmm. If you want to have this really kind of thoughtful story about um, disenfranchised poor people and how uh, white, powerful, rich people are controlling the situation and things like that, just stick to that and take it seriously. Don't add humor in. Don't make it Goonies with a dog and people yeah. under the stairs. Commit to your vision. Don't this this couldn't commit to one thing either way. It couldn't. I like I said we were talking. About, is it a kids movie? Is it? Uh, is this like a horror comedy? What is this? Because yeah. I mean, it could have been really scary. It could, it have, could been have been really been, scary, yeah. and it could have been like, it, and it could have had half as much of the like. Um, contraptions and gags and things like that, and been scarier than it was. Yeah, you know, I yeah. feel like it's those, could have been a dreadful movie. You guys kept talking about how in much you way. loved the contraptions in this house, and my mind's fucking blown by that because all I could think was this is the most Acroidian movie I have seen in a very long time. Oh, if, no. you, if you told me Dan Aykroyd directed this movie, I'd fucking believe you because uh, this screamed nothing but trouble to me, top to bottom. God, we ha- keep mentioning that movie; it's going to get here. Stop it. Yeah. Take that back. Uh, it, <laughs> it's getting talked about. You, We're going to Beetlejuice it. For you people that have seen that, that thought never crossed your mind once watching no, I, this. No, I get it. No, I understand. What, like, what especially the, as soon as the stairs turned into that ramp that slid into the basement, I was like, they're going to land in a fucking bone pile, just uh, like in nothing yeah. but trouble. That's what's going to fucking happen. Great three like, people. I've seen it, too. Didn't I tell you that I saw it? No, you said you'd never seen it. No, I watched it, uh, well, I was like, don't you? say recently. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it was relatively recently. It was oh, this no. year. Yeah. Oh, oh really? Yeah, and yeah, you didn't tell us? I thought I told you. No. About it. no? Okay. okay, we're going to talk about this. Right. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would be a whole another hour of discussing. Yeah. But it, like, I could not believe you guys were like loving the contraption house when, like, to me, I was triggering my PTSD from nothing but trouble. And I was like, especially because, like, it. I, I mean, in this movie, it serves more purpose than most movies with houses with contraptions, right? Like, it makes a little bit more sense in this movie, but. It's still just, like, it's so unnecessary, and it takes the seriousness out of the movie. Like, I think a better version of the similar story is don't breathe. Like, that's a version of kids breaking into a house to steal money from a guy. And, and granted, there's not, like, it's not the same kind of societal message with, like, who has the power and who controls the wealth and things like that. But, like, that guy had things set up to protect himself. And he had a person on his uh, stairs. Yeah, and he had a person on his stairs. <laughs> like, that's the better version of yeah. this movie. Right? So there's that. Yeah. Imagine um, if he had multiples. And that movie was scary as fuck. That, well, that movie was, was disturbing. Yeah, that was, to be that was more a disturbing movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, suspenseful and disturbing. This movie yes. had zero suspense in it whatsoever. Yeah. Because uh, everyone's too loud and crazy in this movie. That, like, And so over the top. It's, yeah. it, it's over the top, but like. You're telling. Like, I just can't believe Wes Craven even directed this movie. I really can't. This is it, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It, it, it is. It is. It's just too much. It's it just is. too much. And I, I just really did not care for this movie. I didn't enjoy watching it. It was very long, and I don't want urban, urban goonies. You know, yeah. like urban treasure hunt with people that you might see eventually under the stairs, but it's mostly going to be a dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do not recommend this movie. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I think conceptually this this movie was, could have been something really terrifying. Um, Wes Craven was inspired to write this after he saw a news story 
where uh, some people went to break into a house, and when the cops were called, they didn't find the burglars, but they found children tied up in a basement. There. And that's where he got the inspiration for this. And I oh, was see, that's like, terrifying. I was he like, all this, that story. he took all the horror out I of it. I was like, that's the movie we needed. Like, that's yeah. the one we wanted. I, I think, you know, the con- the people under the stairs, that that's a terrifying concept. I think the the couple is a terrifying concept. I think the the way they treat their their daughter is terrifying. I think all these all these components could be a really terrifying movie. Even like the booby trap house, you know how ever crazy it is. Like it all of that together could be something really amazing. But then they add the kid, they add the dog, they add this weird humor, and I'm just like, what the fuck am I watching? This is just so odd. They they completely he completely misses the point of of what makes this movie scary. He's he's completely ignoring that part of it and it's very it's very odd to me especially especially when I'm like this is like you said like this is Wes Craven like it's it's very it's very odd. Um I also think there are components of this that maybe it's just because I watched it when I was a kid and I'm like I think people should see this. Maybe it's just because to me like, it's, oh, it's the people under the stairs. Like, how have you not seen this movie? Mm. I think that has a lot to do with it with me. I feel like just everyone has seen this. Um, so that's why I'm, like, on the fence. I'm like, eh, I agree with you guys that it's not something that I want to revisit. However, I'm surprised that anyone would have not seen this. So I'm very torn on whether I want to recommend it or not. Um, but I, I, have to, I have to go with my gut and say, if you have not seen it yet in this point in your life and you're an adult... I think you're going to be disappointed with it. So with that in mind, I don't think I can honestly recommend it. Um, I think if you're a fan of American Horror Story and you want to see where the inspiration came from, I think you might want to give it a watch. If you want to revisit the collective Wes Craven uh, filmography, you should probably watch it. Um, but if you haven't seen it yet at this point, you're probably going to dis- be disappointed because the people under the stairs are not a big part of the movie. And they should be. Mm-hmm. I agree. That's what we wanted going into it, and we didn't get a lot of it. Um, so based on that, I can't honestly recommend the people in the stairs. I she just the people and the people in the yeah. stairs. Yeah, <laughs> I just thought of something else. Don't breathe. Also has a Rottweiler that chases those kids mm-hmm. around in that. Yeah. So that that is the better version of this movie. Yeah. We've, we've already we have it already. Yeah. Uh, so that's the people under the stairs. And next week, uh, we hope you'll join us because we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Michaela. Michaela, what are we going to watch next week? Episode three, four, five. We are going to watch the 1989. That's important because there's a 2015 version. That's not good. Uh, movie called Intruder. It's a 2015 mm. one with Clive Owen. Uh, maybe. But no faces. No, that's a different one. I know. I know what you're talking about. Okay, right. <laughs> but no, this was. Like, I think this might have been a Netflix movie, the new one. Okay. It's it's completely different from the one we're gonna watch. Okay. But every time I search for this movie, that one comes up first. So oh. 1989 is important. People look for your look for your Michigan trifecta or your hat trick here. You're gonna look for Bruce Campbell, Ted Raimi, and Sam Raimi. They're all in this movie, not directly. In a movie, <laughs> none of us have seen. Yep. That's none right. None I have, have not it. even what? heard of it. Nope. What? Amazing. <laughs> it's a slasher Amazing. in a grocery store, so we're going to have a good time. You're saying good, things I like. Yeah. You're saying past. things I yeah. like. Well, okay. Well, all right. Well, that's episode 300 is in the books for the Saturday Night Woo! Freak Show. So, uh, night. again. Going right. to bed. Yep, we're going to bed. Yep, yep. Got to work tomorrow. <laughs> Turning off the, uh, the power. And until then, next time, the basement is going dark.